Hi everyone! In this video I want to analyze a very nice strategical game played by International Master Oltian Dorel against Grandmaster Polygras Mircea Emilian in round 3 of Romanian Superliga. The difference ELO between these two players is 300 points. White started with e4, and black played e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to b5, placing the bishop on the most forward available square, and this is known as the Spanish opening or Luis Lopez. a6, bishop to a4, d6, defending the center, but this move allows white to take on c6, creating some weaknesses on the queen side, but white decided to castle bishop to d7, c3, and with this move white prepares d4 and frees c2 square for the bishop to retreat. g6, black wants to fianchetto his bishop, d4, attacking the center, bishop to g7, and following the strategical principles that we should apply in an opening, a good move for white would be bishop to g5, developing the bishop on the most forward available square. Also, we should increase our piece activity in the opening or decrease opponent activity, so d5 would be a good move, gaining space and pushing the knight back. In the game, rook to e1 was played, activating the rook. This is also a good move because it follows the principle of the least active piece. Knight g to e7, black wants to castle. White here has several options. He can play d5 as we saw earlier, h3 preventing bishop to g4, bishop to e3 defending his center, but in the game he took on e5, releasing the center tension. And here white continues his development with bishop to e3, short castle, knight bd2, h6, controlling g5 square and allowing the king to go on h7. White should finish his opening by playing queen to e2, but in the game he played bishop to c2, queen to c8, queen to e2. The opening is done, king is safe, rooks are connected and all other pieces are developed. We are entering the middle game and here we need to start an attack and for this we need to compose a plan. The plan is composed of two steps. The first one is to identify black weaknesses on the 5th and on the 6th rank and the second step is to involve all our pieces in attacking these weaknesses. Let's go to the first step from our plan. Weaknesses are weak pawns and squares that cannot be protected by other pawns. In this position black weaknesses are a5, c5, d5, f6 squares and the advanced pawn from e5. For a5 and c5 black can push b6 pawn protecting these squares but in the same time he will create a new weakness on c6. There is another strategical principle that tells us to attack weaknesses from the big center which are the squares inside the square from c3 to c6, f6, f3 and back to c3. So white targets in this position are c5, d5, e5 and f6. Let's perform the second step and try to involve all our pieces into the attack. For the moment the queen stands well on this position and at some point she can move on the d-file. Regarding the rooks they can be placed on the d-file. The Darsker bishop can attack weak pawn from e5 by switching to a1 h8 diagonal and this can be done via c5 a3 and uh, b2. The light square bishop stands well on this position. If we try to move it on a4 or b3 this will be attacked by black. The knight from f3 stands well on this position looking at e5 pawn. The other knight from d2 can go to c4 and then to e3 looking at the d5 weak square. So we know what to do with our pieces. Another thing that I want to mention here is that it's very important to spend some time after we finish the opening to create this plan and after it's done we can start moving faster. Another thing that we need to keep in mind is that every time we have a change in material or pawn structure we need to update this plan. Let's see the game continuation where black played bishop to e6, bishop to c5, 
if white would have started with uh, rook a to d1, black would have played uh, b6, not allowing the bishop to move on this square. So bishop to c5 is a good move. b6, bishop to a3, rook to e8. Now white can move the knight to e3. And he played knight to c4, queen to b7, knight to e3. And the knight reached his ideal position. Knight to e7. It seems that black wants to go to b5, attacking the bishop. So white played b3, allowing the bishop to retreat on b2. And on this square, the bishop is well placed on the long diagonal, attacking e5, weak pawn. Knight to b5, a bishop to b2, queen to c6, attacking c3 pawn for a second time. And the white has few moves to defend this pawn. If he tries to defend it with the queen, black will reply with uh, rook e to d8, and the queen has to move. If he tries to place the knight back, this is not good. We don't want to move pieces back. If he goes forward with the pawn, black will manage to place his pawn on d4. So the best move to defend this pawn is to play a4. And if uh, black takes this pawn, white will win this knight, but the knight will take two pieces after knight takes on c3, queen to d3, knight takes on e4, queen takes, queen takes, and bishop takes on d4. So black didn't went for this, instead he played knight to d6, white continued with uh, c4, this is a good move, opening the bishop diagonal, and d5 square is controlled very well by white, and he can place the knight here. In this position, we notice that e4 pawn is attacked twice by the queen and the knight, but white is defending this pawn with tactics. If black takes on uh, e4, we would have knight to g4, and we have a discovered attack on the knight, and here black has two choices, to take the knight or place the knight back. If he takes the knight, then we would have bishop takes on e4, queen to e6, bishop takes on a8, rook takes on a8, and in this position white is an exchange up. Let's see the other line where the knight retreats to d6, and here white will win back the pawn after knight takes on a6 check, bishop takes, queen takes on e5, threatening mate on h8, king to f8, knight to d4, queen to c5, knight takes on e6, check, f takes on e6, queen to h8, check, knight to g8, bishop takes on g6, rook to e7, bishop to e7, threatening mate, queen to g5, defending, rook to e3, intending to give a check, rook takes on h7, queen takes, queen to e7, trying to exchange queens, to f3, check, knight to f5, queen to g6, queen to e8, and white has a strong attack here. In the game, instead black uh, did not take on e4, and he played f6, defending the pawn, and this backward pawn from f6 becomes a target for white. Also, g6 pawn becomes a weakness, and it's a target for white in the future. The idea of black with this move was to defend the pawn and also to shut down the dark square bishop from b2, forming a pawn chain in front of it. This is one of the ways to neutralize a bishop. After this move, white played knight to d5. Good move, looking at f6 pawn, queen to b7. In any position, we should look for attacking moves, and if they don't work, we need to improve the activity of our pieces. A good move for white would be to play knight to h4, threatening to take this knight and then win the pawn. Instead, in the game, white brought his least active piece into the game. He brought the rook to d1, rook a to d8. White can do this idea with uh, attacking the pawn. Also, he can switch the diagonal of the Darsky Bishop and place it on a3. Instead, in the game, he opted to double the rooks on the d-file. c6, pushing the knight, knight to a3, knight to f7, 
rook e to d1, and here black would have tried to exchange a pair of rooks, but he played c6, releasing control of d5 square and white went there immediately, knight to c6, maybe black wants to jump to d4, but the drawback of this move is that g6 pawn is no longer defended, and now white went to h4, knight to h8, defending the pawn, and in this position white bishops are pretty passive, and we need to improve them. Also black king is very weak, so white needs to attack it, and for this he needs to create contact between pieces, exchange them, in order to open files towards black king. So white next move is pretty easy, he played f4, this is not a free pawn, because if he takes f6 pawn will be captured, and the game black reply with bishop to c8, and here white can take on e5, opening the f file, transferring the rooks on this file, but uh, white didn't opt it for this. Let's see what would happen in this case. f takes, f takes, queen to e3, making room for the rooks to switch on the f file, knight to d4, rook to f2, rook to f8, rook d2, f1, bishop to e6, bishop takes on d4, e takes on d4, rook takes on f8 check, rook takes, queen to g3, attacking a g6 pawn, rook takes on f1 check, king takes on f1, bishop takes on d5, e takes on d5, queen to f7 check, king to e1, king to h7, and this is uh, equal position, so maybe this is why white didn't want it to take on e5 on the game, instead he played f5, and here black closed the position with uh, g5, knight to f3, black continue with knight to f7, h3, preventing g4 from black, knight to d4, attacking the queen, queen to d3, knight to d6, rook to f2, white is waiting, position is slightly better for him, so he's in no hurry, black continue with b5, the drawback of this move is that the c5 pawn remains unprotected, and white attacks it, bishop to a3, black can defend this pawn with queen to a7, or push before kicking the bishop, but uh, in the game he was impatient and sacrificed a piece for two pawns, and he took on e4, and next he will take on f5, but the problem with this move is that black opened b1 h7 diagonal for white, which is a big mistake. Before taking on f5, black opened the b file, but white bishops control the entry points in white position. Now black took on f5, and the bishop and the queen for a battery that wants to execute black king. White only needs to kick the knight away and he will mate black king. So after g4 black has two options to attack the queen or put the knight on e7. If he goes to d6 attacking the queen, queen to h7 check, king to f8, knight takes on g5, good move. Now the rook is on the same file with the black king h takes on g5, knight takes on f6, bishop takes, queen to h8, check using the pin, king to e7, queen takes on f6, king to d7, and mate on d6. If black goes with the knight to e7, we would have knight takes on f6, check, bishop takes on f6, queen to h7, check, king to f8, knight takes on e5, using the pin, Rook takes on d1, bishop takes on d1, knight to g8, and a knight to g6 mate. In the game in the original position, after knight takes on f5, white played knight to h2. White wants to sacrifice the rook for the two pieces, and if uh, black tries to, to run away with the knight, for example to e7, he's uh, mated with the same idea as we saw in the previous line, with knight takes on f6 check, bishop takes, queen to a7 check, king to f8, and rook takes on f6. 
In the game, Black realized that his sacrifice made three moons ago was was not good, and he sacrificed the exchange with Rook takes on d5. And after White recaptured on d5, he resigned. A possible continuation would be Knight to e7, Queen to h7 check, King to f8, Bishop takes on c5, Queen to c7, Bishop to a3, Queen to c3, attacking the Bishop, Bishop to g6, Queen takes on e3, for example, Rook takes on f6 check, Bishop takes, and we have mate. So, this was the game between International Master Oltean Dorel and Grandmaster Puligras Miocemilian. If you found this video useful, click on the like button, share this video, watch other games from my channel, and leave some comments and suggestions in the comment section. See you next time. Bye.